The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 1st, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877 927 6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, marvelous magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the NASDAQ 100 off 50 cents, so basically flat. Dow's up 110, S&P's up 10, NASDAQ is flat, as we said. The Russell's up 9, semis are up 20, Trendy's up 62, New York Stock Exchange up 47, gold's off 8, silver's up 12 cents, lights recruiters back a buck 50, natural gas off 8 cents, 30 treasury down 1.5 points, printing out at 130.06. Now, leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got Ascends Pharmaceuticals. It's a Sending a higher price, up nearly 13 bucks or 18 percent. Midwest Holdings, 12 bucks, 90 percent. Monolithic Power Systems, nearly 2 percent or 8 bucks. Nvidia up 8, and Eli Lilly is up 7.5. That's about a 2 percent move to the upside. The Shakers to the downside, 43 bucks for a top financial group. That's down 40 percent. MicroStrategy off 15 bucks or 5 percent. Cost goes off 8 bucks, 1.5 percent. Solar Edge, 7 dollars to the downside. 2.5% and Netflix is off 2.5% as well. That's about 8 bucks to the downside. So where do we want to begin? Well, actually, the first question that came in was from Peter and asked about the advanced client oscillator. So let's get that nipped in the butt out there. And for that, we'll take a look at the, this panel here. The advanced client oscillator, folks, which is the center panel of the screen out here, panel number two from the top, uh, is uh, measuring the difference between the uh, 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced client line. As an example, I actually believe on this chart here, if we edit it, I think we can actually add the advanced decline line. So give me a moment. We'll just uh, just throw this in here. Uh, advanced decline line. Let's see. There we go. So here, what we can see, so this is kind of an interesting thing. Wow. The advanced decline line topped all the way back here, back in uh, 2021. Now, I hadn't noticed that. I hadn't really taken a look at that. So that's a kind of an interesting uh, trend. Right now, we're still, even if we just simply come forward to the uh, February time frame, you know, we're in a bit of a downtrend. What does that say? The, the issue there is if we take out the highs, I'd say the highs from back here in February then that would really become an issue. But that's what this is doing. So this is measuring the exponential different average between the 13 and the 19, 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average daily time frame since we're looking at a daily chart out there. And right now, Peter, you can see that price uh, it closed above. Well, I, I guess you don't know that it did close above zero, the zero threshold level on, on Friday. If it closes back above it today, it tells us that the buyers are the ones that are in control of the market. The bottom panel here is the spot volatility. 
still well below its 50-day exponents moving average. We know that's positive for the S&P 500. And the summation index here, it switches from green to red. Uh, you know, our, our, our friend David White used to show uh, this a version of the uh, summation index all the time. And really all that that's doing is really taking a look at that advanced decline oscillator. Its line is changing color, at least on my screen, um, uh, when price is above or below the um uh, the zero threshold level so that's what's going on peter with regard to the advanced decline oscillator as we speak right now at 11 11 in the uh, morning on may the uh, first it's in a uh, bullish mode condition out there so that helps answer your question with regard to the general markets out here just take a look at where we're at and here we've got both a uh, daily and the weekly time frame so in the upper left hand corner let's just start there the es mini is trading above the top of its daily profile. That profile level is 41.88. A close above 41.88 today is going to suggest to run up to 42.44. 42.44 is the top of the weekly profile. Let's take us over into the NQ. The NQ is already at the top of its weekly profile. And that level is 13.348.75 to be exact. If price on a weekly basis is able to overcome that, then it's going to say that the A to B equals CD pattern that is out here is well underway. That A to B equals CD pattern, just so you have a price projection, the one-to-one -one price projection is up at the 13,996 level. So that's where we would project price would head to if we get a weekly close above 13,348. If we look at the Dow, the Dow equity future contract on Friday closed right at resistance, top of its daily profile, 34,209. Assuming we get a close above that today, that's going to suggest a run up to the top of its weekly profile, 34,596. Now, the Russell 2000, this is the little booger. This has run into resistance where a counter trend move would find resistance. Day is not over. It has pierced above it, and that being 1789.31 to be exact, that is the center of its bullish structure daily profile. Now, technically speaking here, we really haven't had two closes below the bottom of that profile. So here's how I would play this. If we get it close below 1781, then that 1789 level becomes where that move, where a counter trend rally would end. I think it's too early to call. Yes, we have price trading up into trend line resistance areas out here, trading into profile resistance uh, levels out there. But if we can't get a close above 1789, it's going to signal move up to the 1814 level. So watch the close today inside the Russell 2000. If it does close above 1781.08, then it's back inside its profile after one day, and that's not exactly a bearish signal out there for its new profile. So that's what's going on when I take a look at uh, those markets. Um, we can go take a look at the intraday to see if there's anything that's showing up from an intraday standpoint. So let's do that. Let's move over to the white background charts. It'll take us just a moment to get over there. In the upper left-hand corner, momentarily, you'll see the daily time frame again for the ES Mini, up about uh, 16 tenths, 100 of a percent out here. Five-hour chart has a TD9 count top that if at 2 p.m. price closes above, uh, and that level would be 41.96. Then that pattern is going to get negated. And that's going to then send the signal to you that price should go target that 42.44, the top of that weekly profile. On a two-hour chart, you've got a TD9 count top pattern as well. What's the high of that candle session? That high is 41.96 as well. So you negate that signal out there. Um, the other, the 60-minute, the 30-minute, a bit stretched out here. You've got a Rose Mintum indicator top that's trying to form. Um, out here, but we're not seeing any levels of support. In the case of the ES Mini, I put it at about 41.83 as a real key level of support. The shorter term charts, so they are, you know, they're struggling. And you got those TD9 count tops in the five hour and the two hour. So we know what to look for to the upside. Price may hold this level, may just uh, sit around and consolidate it. It may even pull back to 41.63. But watch 41.84 first. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get into some requests out there. I don't know if this one was a request, but it's Stevie's taken it anyways. And that is uh, Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics. BCLI is the uh, ticker symbol out there. You can see it's trading above that daily green oscillator and change line. That's currently printing out at 296. Price is at three bucks. Even Steven on my screen right now, it's showing 302. Dano, if you get a close above that, price should go target resistance. That's going to be the Three River Evening Star candle formation. That's up at the 337 uh, level out there. If you get above 337, well, you get back the next swing point but perhaps you'll get to the 470 area the top of that weekly profile if i switch over to the uh, black background charts here momentarily i've got my automated uh uh, automated uh, trend line detection tool on uh, those charts. You'll see that on a weekly basis right now, uh, you're also dealing with uh, trend line resistance. So you probably already have that drawn in on your chart. Just pay attention to that. That'd be a nice area to be able to clear through. So that was Brainstore Cell Therapeutics. Next question is uh, from uh, John C. in the Tiger's Den as well. He wants to take a look at Amazon. It says Amazon is weaker than the market. Now, in the case of Amazon here, John, this completed on Friday a sell the D point pattern. So, yeah, yes, it's weaker. It's just really its pattern here that it identified. So I've just got there's there. Here's the A to B line. And then we just simply draw that in and then take that over to the C line. We got to the one-to-one -one level. That didn't mean because we got to the one-to-one -one that that was the end of the pattern. What meant that it was the end of the pattern there, John, was the uh, bearish reversal candle, that little bear separation line. And now price is uh, back inside its oscillator and change line. It's below the green oscillator and change line. And that suggests that we've got a little bit of a... Uh, consolidation perhaps going on so price should go target that 101.92 level for amazon um volume today inside of amazon so far we've done about 25 million shares last time we were down we did 65 million shares so you've got pretty decent volume on this move lower in amazon i would expect or anticipate that the next target area is 101.92 well steve well, what happens if price close below 101.92 excellent question I would then say 9708, the top of the weekly profile, becomes the uh, next level of potential support. 
the ideal level of support, if Amazon could pull back there, would be at that 92.61 level. That is a, a bear structured weekly profile that price has been above for several months out here. And I don't have any signal that that's where price is going to pull back to. I'm just giving you that would be the ideal area to be buying Amazon would be 92.61. So first thing you got to watch for out there, John, is the um, – Sell the deep point pattern and the profiles, and that's that 101.92 level out there. So I hope that helped you out or answered any kind of question that you had. If not, just to write back to me, and we'll do the best to get you the information that you are looking for. Um, next question is coming from Roger, and Roger wants to take a look at uh, Fed Announcement Day. And so where's the question? I didn't write it down. I think his question was, do you – Identify any potential Fed plays for this week. Do you prefer to trade ahead of the Fed announcement? Thanks, Stevie. I prefer to trade the uh, patterns that are that are in the uh, market more than more than whether it's Fed Day or not. But let's get to your specific question. And your specific question is: Is there any kind of signal with regard to Fed Day? So what I can share with you is the following. So one of the cool things that the folks at SeasonX uh, has uh, added to their seasonal charts has been their event series. So what I actually have, Roger, here up on my screen right now is the event series covering a 10-day period of time. So the zero line, the vertical line that we're taking a look at, represents, I would say that represents Fed Day. So that is Thursday. Today's the first. That would be the fourth, I believe. So that's the fourth. Here's the third. Here's the second. Here's where we're at right now today. So three days behind. What's the market do typically? Well, we can see here it's really kind of flattish to lower. Right. It looks like uh, between today and tomorrow we had lower, then we had higher, then we had lower. But look, if we take a look now, this is over a 10 year period of time. Well, actually, let me, just, let me make sure that was for a 10 year period. Yeah, that was for a 10 year period of time. So during the last 10 years, during the last decade after the Fed announcement, we've seen prices move lower the day after the Fed release announcement for four consecutive sessions. That's what it's done on average. Now, let's go beyond 10 years out here. I'm on the white background charts. Am I really? No, I'm not. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Got that. Okay. So here, let's take a look at uh, – that was a Stevie just misreading there. Let's take a look at 15 years. Any difference? Not really any difference here. Um, so it looks like, you know, the markets want to move lower. How about the last 25 years? What do we see? The last 25 years really says that two days – for the says we move lower today, and then we move higher for the next two days, and then lower for five days out there, basically. So what this is in here, let's just take a look at 95 years old. That's probably not appropriate out here. Yeah, I'm not going to, I wouldn't rely on a 95, but for certainly for 25 years out here, I think that would be reasonable. So your specific question, kind of like, is there any kind of a tell as to what the S&P, well, the market, I'm using the S&P as the market for, for our purposes at this stage here. And uh, that seems to indicate that, you know, all that I've shared with you now, with regard to the market, I said, you know, the best to trade the patterns that are out there. And so for those patterns, that's really looking at, for example, the ES Mini. I don't think we've done that. So perhaps we should do that. Well, we're, 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 oh, we, oh, that was silver. You know what? Silver's the next one up. Let's do this here. Uh, I'm going to do a little um, uh, hodgepodge just because the silver charts are up. And Mike K, which is the next question after this Fed announcement question, was to take a look at silver. So Roger and Mike, if that's okay with you, this is what Stevie's gonna do. I'm gonna switch to silver. Then when we're done, take a look at the silver charts. We'll go back and take a look at the ES Mini, see what kind of, well, we already did that. We already did that because uh, John posted the charts there. So the ES Mini, you've got those TD9 count tops. Uh, Roger, it's pay attention to that level that I gave you there. Uh, if price closes above it, it tells you so that we're headed higher. And headed higher to where? Well, we already covered that level. That'd be at the 4244-ish area. Uh, but if you're asking me, seasonally speaking, uh, Fed announcement a couple days before and after, what does the market do? Well, we've been able to share that with you. So I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for the question. So since we are sitting on the silver charts, oh, we're not. We will be momentarily. Those are on the white background charts. If you give us a moment, we'll get over there. And so Mike wanted me to just simply take a look at silver, I believe. And as we do take a look at silver, you've got that consolidating pattern with inside the daily profile right now. So you know the top of that profile has been a strong resistance area. On the five-hour time frame chart, what do you have out here? Not much, but you've got a pretty big move 
over the last, um, well, since 9 o'clock, this five-hour chart bar will close at 2 p.m. You're back inside the profile. Looks to me like silver here might, might target that 2498 level. As a sport level, it's been tested several times and has held. If we look at the uh, four-hour time frame chart, it says 2482. Could be a support toward 2482, 2498. And then finally, I go at 2502, which is a two-hour time frame chart. Now, I don't have topping patterns, per se, out here on those, although I could draw in easily an A to B equals CD. So you do have a sell the D point pattern out here. So watch those support levels. Now, in a 60-minute time frame, price is already below support. This was a new profile that just formed, and that support was at 25 35 and we close below it on that last bar so second close below that suggests lower price the 30 minute is back to its breakout level that breakout level can be support so here's a cool thing well that can be support 25 23 but just below it or not much further below it at 2506 is another breakout support area for silver but no bottoming signal just simply a cascade fall um out here on the 15 minute well, the 10-minute negated a TD9 count bottom. So that tells you and I that price should continue to head lower. The 15-minute has a TD9 count potential bottom. Bar number 8 is going to complete right now at 11.30. Bar number 9 at 11.45. Bar number 10, the bar following 9, at noon. Couldn't get a bottom. Uh, couldn't get a, a at least a short-term bottom there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Looks like I forgot to put the uh, correct Amazon uh, chart uh, screens up uh, for you. So here's the Amazon uh, chart. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern. You can see the bearish reversal candle from Friday. You can see the new the profile that's trading within. There's your 101.92 as one price target. The price closes below that. Then we get down to 97.08, the top of the weekly profile out there. So that's Amazon. My apology. Now, this is going to be day number two of consecutive moves lower for Amazon. I'd expect it to find some type of short-term bottom uh, tomorrow or so. There's typically a two to three day move lower out here uh, that doesn't mean that it's the bottom but uh, i would expect amazon to get some type of short-term relief in the next uh, day or so out there next question was to take a look at the jd that's for alton so let's get those repopulated on my screen here and uh, let's actually uh, read the question the question goes like this it says hey steve if you have time please look at uh, jd it has gotten hit lately i'm looking to play it for a bounce what are your thoughts thank you have a happy week you do as well so as we take a look at JD, that is JD.com, it's got a rose momentum indicator signal. It doesn't have the bullish reversal candle, but what price is doing is trading above the uh, center of its bullish structure profile. So Alton, what JD should do from here is typically when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, price will make its alt way up to resistance or the top of that profile. That's at 36.95. The weekly chart last week formed a bullish hammer candle. The problem is, there ain't no pattern. Well, I take that back. The pattern was retesting. Was this retesting? Yeah. Well, it was close to retesting. The low that I was looking at was from the week of October 28th, and that low was 33.17. We got down last week. I'm going to move this over. Sorry. We got down to a low last week of 33.53. So we didn't get all the way down there. So we have a test of the swing point. We don't have rejection of the swing point. The volume on a weekly base was 53 million versus 91 million. So we do like that this is pulling back with lighter volume. But you're below the profile. You haven't, you're still inside that swing point. It's trying to form a bottom, but it's a risky. It's, it's risky. It's risky at, 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 uh, at best to use the weekly chart as our signal here just at the uh, moment. On a monthly time frame basis, price was pulling back, so it was going against that same October month, 236 million. Last month was 206. Um, so slightly lighter out there, but still no real test of that swing point. So you're looking for an entry here. Um, I'd be patient. I'd be patient. I would definitely be patient. I would expect today to be a, a pullback day inside of uh, JD. If we take a look at its uh, dance step moves out there, it did have three consecutive days higher out there. At recent history, all it's gotten to is four consecutive uh, closes. So not a surprise to see this pull back. You'd expect this to pull back for two days would be the normal dance step move out here, two to three days when it comes to uh, JD. So if you're trying to take a long position in JD, then why don't you wait for it to get back towards the uh, bullish structured area of that profile between 3402 and 3451. And the 5-hour, uh, five five the 30-minute uh, chart out here has a nice TD9 count top. Uh, price likely targeting 3461. That's its breakout level. You're below profile. You're below the oscillator and change line. So it does look like should you want to try a starter position here, you should be able to get that uh, perhaps uh, perhaps by the end of uh, tomorrow. But watch that 3402-3451 level, Alton. And thanks for taking the time to write in. You have a, a wonderful week as well. Next question coming from Hector and the fuel injectors. Hector writes in and says, happy marvelous Monday. Same to you, my friend. Hector says, uh, QQQ on a weekly. Please confirm. We know we don't like this shallow pullback from uh, – for the B to C, but he's looking for a weekly A to B equals C. So we're going to switch panels here, folks, to do that. We're going to go to the black background charts because Steve's got his A to B equals CD tool programmed on that application. So now let's get to uh, QQQ. And let's go ahead and uh, we've got the weekly charts going to be in the center. So as we take a look at the Qs out here, I guess uh, we haven't looked at this chart here for a while. We can do a little housekeeping, get rid of that descending price channel that it was in. And... Um, so you're looking on a weekly basis. So if you're looking for the A to B equals CD pattern of the upside, you're using, for the A point, you're using 1010. Yep, that's correct. For the B point, you're using April. You're, using, you're all the way out here in April. I, you don't, you don't want to really do that, Hector, because you do have a retracement that would be logical. And that retracement, I would say for the B point, 
that's what you would use here. Well, let's go. We're going to find out what that retracement is. Would be the high of January 30th. I think that's the more logical um, B point of an A to B equals CD. So let's still take a look at that. The A point, as you've identified, the B point. We'll use Stevie's version here, and then we'll use that pull back into support, that bullish structured support level on a weekly basis. The week of March the 13th. That was a 47% retracement. So, and we go. I can go use yours, but you already did did that. Did the problem with using? You would have had to have used the high of April 3rd. What did you use? You used the B point of April 10th. You're trying to use. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe it's all well, that's because my week begins April 3rd, so it'd be five days, so April 8th. So it's gonna, but anyway, in any event, that's not the that's not the correct B point. You do want to have a retracement, which so you were really close, you know, because you're saying, hey, I know, Stevie, you don't like those shallow retracements. Well, we've got a real retracement here now with regard to the Qs, the volume of that B point was 322 million shares. The week of uh, 327 was only 272, then 202, 258, 250, 280 last week. So we're still above the B point, but with lighter volume. But notice this here, Hector and Patty, the one-to-one -one on a weekly basis would get us up to 344.61, and that would take us right in to that descending uh, a, a trend line that is available on the a weekly time frame. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the A to B equals CD down pattern out here. This is the interesting thing about the Qs as well, and, and really about the A to B equals CD pattern. You know, the uh, B point of a monthly A to B equals CD was uh, June of 2022. 1.35 billion shares was passed with 1.37 billion shares. And that was done in September 2022. So not until price takes out the high of the month of August of 2022, that would be 334.42. Can we really get rid of this A to B equals CD to the downside out here? So that is still in play. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just simply pointing out to you in one sense or another, we have a confirmed sell the D point on a monthly time frame. On the weekly basis, we don't have a confirmed by, uh, we don't have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside from a volume standpoint, but from a price standpoint, we most certainly do. And right now, price is dealing with the uh, top of its weekly profile, 321.63 out there. So, Hector, I hope that answers your question. And my thoughts were you had a retracement. That's what you use. And uh, because it really fits with the whole uh, – it fits with the uh, program – with the program. fits with the uh, – it fits with the – the uh, – it fits with the rules of the A to B equals CD pattern. Those are Stevie rules, though. I'm just kidding. Those are the real rules of the A to B equals CD pattern. Peak G wanted to take a look at a couple of instruments. One is TK. So let's go switch over to the white background screens. I think I may have already populated our charts with that. So let's get over there, go to our next tab, and see if, in fact, Stevie did that. That's probably the Qs, though. Yep, that was the Qs, so we don't need that. Let's come back to this here. And there we go. So we got TK. This is for Peak G. Peak, nice to see inside the Tiger's Den. This is TK Corporation, by the way. And um, you've got bar number eight that's going to complete today of a TD9 count. Typically, when you get a confirmed bar number eight, 90% of the time it goes on to form a TD9 count. You should get a TD9 count pattern in TK for its daily time frame that forms between today and Wednesday. Also, looks like we could have an A to B equal CD to the downside. So let's look at that with peak G we get back to this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, we're taking a look at the uh, stock charts here for ticker symbol TK. TK is uh, actually T-E-K-A-Y Corporation. So it's a TK Corporation right now. Price trading out at about 551, really 549 was the last trade that fired off. It does have peak. It does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection takes us to 531. If we take a look at the monthly chart, right-hand panel chart, you'll see a TD9 count top. Where's support? Well, the first support level is a new profile that just formed this month, 498. So we got 498 and 531 as price targets for you. 501, by the way, would be the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the downside. So you've got that pattern that is in play, and you've got the potential for a TD9 count that should complete by Wednesday out there. So what do you do? Would you just take a long position with that TD9 count? Knowing that you've got the A to B equals CD pattern as well, I wouldn't. I would wait for a bullish reversal candle or some kind of real clear convincing uh, bottom or potential bottom on an intraday chart like a 30-minute chart. We don't have that as we speak right now as an example. Of course, we're expecting price to move lower for at least the next day or two out here. But you'd be looking for something like this, a confirmed broad momentum indicator signal. We don't have that as we speak. So TK should head lower. Now, price targets again, initial price targets. 498 to uh, 531. And if we take a look, this is a very weak instrument out here right now. Why does Stevie say that? Well, if we take a look at the last couple of dance steps, we've seen only a one-day rally. You at least typically get a two-bar two rally. We've seen two, three-bar declines out here most recently. So what I would expect is that it's a decline today, a decline tomorrow, and a decline on Wednesday. That gets you to that TD9 count bottom. And then hopefully on Thursday, you get a bullish reversal candle to confirm a uh, buy the D point pattern as well as that TD9 count. If not, you could easily be looking at price then getting back to that 501-ish level. And if 498 doesn't hold, then you're looking at a move even further lower, like 392 and so forth. And right now on the weekly chart, Price is testing weekly support, and that's at that uh, 552 area. And so a close below that this week is going to tell you a lower price. So, Peak G, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. You also wanted to look at instrument uh, symbol STNG out there. So as we take a look at STNG, trading at about 5062, really 5028 was the last trade that fired off. Bar number seven. Today we are in wave number seven as well. That's letter G. Uh, that doesn't get confirmed until you get a higher low out here. But uh, on a weekly basis, you're inside its profile. On the weekly chart here, we'll get to the daily 
in just a few. But the weekly chart is suggesting they move back to the 46.43, 48.41 level out there. It's got a confirmed Roach Mintum indicator top. You're below, you're within inside the box, and so that becomes a logical range out there. On a monthly time frame, you have a sell the D point pattern. Price is back inside its profile. 48.49 is uh, where it wants to target. So we've got 48.49, 46.43 to 48.41 as being logical areas of potential support. We take a look at the daily time frame. Let's expand this out, see what we've got here. So you've got an A to B equals CD pattern. This has been confirmed. Well, the volume on the B point is going to be 1.9 million shares. When price closed below that, it was with 1.5 million. The next day, one point, uh, just 940. The next day, 760. So it has not taken out the B point with volume. That doesn't mean, peak, that it won't complete the A to B equals CD pattern. That's the pattern out there. Let's just simply move this line over to the uh, C point. As soon as Stevie can grab it. There we go. Play a little grabby. And so we've already, we're already at the one-to-one -one area. So what you'd be looking for here is you'd be looking for a bullish reversal candle to uh, confirm a buy the D point pattern. Short of that, and it looks more likely than not, price wants to get to 46.11. That is the next TD9 count breakout area on the daily time frame for STNG. And STNG is Scorpio Tankers. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Is Scorpio Tankers. So, Peak, I hope that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a magical, marvelous Monday out there. Next question coming in from John, also known as Z, inside our Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at ticker symbol APO. APO trading around the range of 63.62. It's really 63.58, the last trade. It is trading. That's interesting. That does not happen too often, but I've got two sets of profiles out here. Yeah, all right, so... That makes Stevie's work just a tad more difficult. Well, I don't have a different profile on the weekly time frame. So first thing, John, on the weekly time frame, price closed above, has been above the top of its weekly bearish structure profile. This will be week number four. What we know here, John, is that the resistance level has proven to be that green oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 64.95. A close above that this week is going to suggest that we head higher. Head higher to where? 66.50 or 68.75. 66.50 is the monthly oscillator and change line, and with price consolidating with inside its profile and above the weekly top of its profile out there, that's what leads me to believe 66.50. Now, on the daily time frame, and I'll switch back so you can see the other chart as well. The white background, both of them are using the same data, and every now and then they calculate different numbers. I use them both. So on the white background chart, the number would be 63.22. Before I switch over, the number on the black background chart, just because you can jot it down, I know you'll grab uh, snapshots of these, is 63.79. So from a conservative standpoint, if price can close above 63.79, then you're back inside as profiles, both of them for sure. And that's then going to suggest a move up to the 64.93 or 66.07. So the top of my profiles and center are the same on both sets of charts. It is the bottom one. Well, I, yeah, it's the well. Yeah, it's the bottom one that is uh, off just a, a tad out there. So, what else do we see? Uh, APO. You know what else? Let's go see what we've got going on. I don't have any other requests here that I see at the moment, or maybe there was. But uh, let's go take a look at um, see if APO. I don't want. I want the seasonality. Sorry. Let's see if APO data is out here. APO. Now we can just take a look at its seasonals. Stevie, type, type Stevie. There we go. We got APO right here. So how many years worth of data do we have? We have 12 years worth of data. So, John, seasonally speaking, what uh, this typically forms a short-term top in early May, May 9th, next week, a short-term bottom a few days later, and then it's basically off to the raises. So we are in a favorable seasonal cycle, which really begins in April, and you can see, for the most part, runs through July and then August, September are kind of Debbie Downer type months uh, based on the uh, last 12 years seasonal cycle for APO. So we're still going to go with, uh, let's switch back to the other uh, set of charts out there. We'll switch back to the black brown charts. That way you'll grab or you'll see the other set of profiles that we're dealing with here. We're looking at the left-hand panel and you'll see that the bottom of its profile versus 63.22 on the white is at 63.79 out there. So you got to use them both. One's at resistance, one is above resistance. Which one is correct? Well, I tell you what, 
If you're above resistance on the other one, it's going to work out and it's going to move higher. Well, then 63.79 shouldn't be an issue. So Z, Mr. Z and the Tigers, and I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. Let's see. Uh, looks like we might have uh, Dan inside the Tigers and says uh, Nike. So let's go take a look at NKE as the ticker symbol. See if we can assist him with regard to support. He's asking specifically about support. So in the case of Nike, let's get this to populate here. NKE. Let me get that going on my black background chart. It's trading above the top of its daily profile, Dan. And uh, so that is a bullish signal. Let me pull this back just a bit. So it's going to take a little bit of work here. Let's see. What do we have in the case of Nike? So Nike, Dan, is trading. You, you, you know this. Nike is trading into the February 2nd swing point. That swing point had volume of 5.2 million shares. So far today, you're up with 1.4, with a little over two hours of trading. Four or three. So you're in with lighter volume. We'll be right back to finish looking at Nike. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so right now we've got a, uh, let's see here, everything moving to the upside. Now a little bit of a mixed bag. The NDX down 30 points. NASDAQ Composite up 22. Dow's up 56. S&P's up 3. We're taking a look at the chart here for Nike. Dan, I know you want the intraday charts here, so I'll get to those in a moment. Right now what Nike is doing, it's testing its swing point. It's on a daily basis. Uh, this is a swing point from February the 2nd. That swing has volume of 5.2 million shares. So far, again, you're pushing up with 1.5 as we speak, with about two and a half hours of trading. So volume's going to be 
somewhat uh, oh i see i've got the white background charts thank you thank you hold on a minute here thank you al i appreciate that now let's get to the white background chart so you'll see that. So Nike pushing to that swing point. One, a close above 127.86. Even if it's light volume, Dan, could suggest a move to the top. Now it's bullish. because uh, So what you really need is you need a close below 127.86 today because uh, you're short this uh, with less than uh, 5.2 million shares. But it's still is, it's bullish. Short of that, it's bullish. Price above the oscillator and change line and above the top of its weekly profile on the uh, the daily time frame. The weekly charge above the green oscillator and change line, that's bullish. It says it wants to get to 131. The monthly chart above that green oscillator and change line says it wants to get to the top of its profile, 133.72. So all those charts are saying they Nike wants higher price. Well, what's the 30-minute chart here show? A 30-minute chart, I see an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, that certainly hasn't uh, played out or completed. Uh, I see price uh, trading with inside a profile. Let me see, where's the top of that profile? 127.14. No, I see price on an intraday basis as bullish. Price above the top of its profile, 127.14, and above its green oscillator and change line at 127.57 out there. That was a 30-minute chart. Let's go take a look at, I don't know what intraday chart you wanted. The oscillator and change line will not be correct here, Dan. That's going to show a 30-minute. On a 15-minute basis, though, the patterns are going to be correct. On a 15-minute basis, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and price obviously testing that area of that 30-minute oscillator and change line. So if you get a close, I'd say below that 127.57 level, at least the 15-minute chart suggests a pullback, maybe all the way to 126.13. And on a 15-minute basis, that's perhaps the most key, important level for you. If price can close below that, perhaps you do have a change in trend. But otherwise, daily, weekly, monthly suggests they want higher price. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Thanks for joining us on Marvelous Monday. I'll see you back here on Terrific Tuesday. Have a safe one. We'll see you soon.